Warning, this video may potentially trigger seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is advised. scientifically known as Homo sapiens, have existed for quite some time. The term Homo is derived from Latin, meaning human or man. Thanks to science, we have discovered that our bundles of flesh and bones have been trudging the planet for an estimated 300,000 years, originating from Africa. But we are far from being the first to do it, as we have many ancestral hominins that came long before us. We, like the other hominins, descended from the great apes. The hominin family tree is quite exhaustive, so we won't bore you with excess. But here's the skin. Homo habilis, habilis being based on a Latin term that means handy or skillful, is the first contestant that we will mention in this grand game of life. Habilis lived roughly two million years ago, and are known as the toolmakers of the family. They earn this title thanks to stone tools being discovered near their fossilized remains. Then, Homo erectus, meaning upright man, lived close to one million years ago, and are the pyromaniacs of the family. Early evidence of hearths appeared during the same time range as Homo erectus, so they most likely used them for cooking their food, keeping warm, and social interaction. Homo erectus was also the first of the hominins to have human-like body proportions and to migrate out of Africa. Next up, we have the Neanderthals. These hominins popped into existence about 400,000 years ago, and are our closest extinct human relative. Although their name now is being used as an insult, they were very, very far from stupid. They used diverse tools, controlled fire, built their own shelters, wore clothing, and even made decorations. But perhaps the most interesting bit of all is they were the first to bury their dead, often marking their graves with flowers and other offerings. This may be where our ability to feel emotion first began. The death of a close individual invoked a new feeling, sympathy. Anyways, none of this shit really matters. Well, maybe the sympathy bit, but I know you're not following anyways. All that matters is that you and I are Homo sapiens, the final and only surviving member of the hominins. You and I are humans. How's it feel to be human? Thrown into the cataclysmic cesspool called existence is like taking a dive into a liquid nitrogen chilled swimming pool. Out of nowhere you gain sentience and suddenly you are bombarded with feelings and sensations like no other. Those lights. Yeah, what's it? Learn what a bird is. What the fuck is learning what a bird is? Why does this process happen automatically? What is thinking? Why is thinking? Years and years pile up, now you have memories, friends, a personality biases, hates, likes, love, sadness, envy, curiosity, fuck! Welcome to the human experience, baby, and nobody truly knows a single thing about it. Well, guess what? Eight billion other schmucks got conned into the same Ponzi scheme. Roughly 150,000 of those will take their last breath today, and close to 400,000 will take their first. You, in a way, are lucky. You made it to today, and hopefully you make it till tomorrow. You are and are not the main character. You're standing in the cosmos, on a floating rock, buying shoes, drinking coffee, and watching this shitty little video. Thanks for tuning in, by the way! Isn't it crazy to think that every decision you have ever made has led you to this moment here, watching this video? Weird. Tomorrow you will go about your daily routine. 6 a.m. arrives, you make your favorite breakfast food. Maple and brown sugar oatmeal, and some bacon on the side. You eat quickly, chug your orange juice, brush your teeth, get dressed, and rush out the door to make the commute. You arrive downtown and park your car at the hotel you work at as a doorman. Before you start your shift, you make a quick stop at your favorite coffee shop. You see your favorite barista and exchange hellos and how are yous. You order a small latte, skim milk instead of whole, two sugars and a little cream. Your order is called and you snatch it instantly. In your rush to get to work on time, you accidentally bump into a man walking down the street, spilling your coffee all over him. You apologize profusely and rush away, but now, 
The man has a bitter taste in his mouth thanks to you. This man was already having a bad day, but you didn't know that, right? You are two hours in your shift, and out of the corner of your eye, you see the man you accidentally bumped into earlier approaching. You take notice and go to apologize again. And guess what? You are now dead. Thanks to some random fuck you accidentally ran into. Everything you ever were, and everything you could ever be, gone. And the man who shot you, he's not going to be staring at a cement wall until his body gives out. Sure, in his mind, he didn't give a fuck. But you, you hated killing little bugs in your wall, let alone another human being. You truly didn't mean it, but it cost you your life. You're a little pissed, which is understandable. You just got shot over a coffee stain, but you remember people have been killed for far sillier reasons. It's a pity. At least there might be an afterlife. Emphasis on the might. You assumed that this man would forgive. You assumed he had an ethical approach to life. Sure, you spilled your coffee on him, and likely ruined his shirt. But to put a fucking bullet in someone for that? To think that every day we simply rely on the assumption that others will have our well-being and their best interest is fucking terrifying. Every decision you have ever made has led you to bleed out on the city's pavement. Lying next to a pile of pigeon shit, questions start bombarding your mind, and you ask yourself, Where did it go wrong? Don't worry, the world has always been kind of fucked. Mothers of baby birds kick their own out of the nest, and praying mantises bite the head off of their fiancé. So yes, you may say nature is indifferent and cruel. So why is it different when a human, which is basically still an animal, commits animalistic acts, such as murder, theft, adultery, and harassment? The reason why it is different is because humans contain the ability to reflect, reason, feel, and understand. We have the capability to surpass our primal nature and uphold ourselves to a greater standard. We are able to infer that we should not commit certain acts, but yet we do, far too often, and it is not completely our fault. We may be under the impression that the decision we make is a good one. As Sartre states, man can never choose evil. We always choose the good. But the good may not necessarily be good for all. Nothing can be good for us without being good for all. So you may believe that you are making a good decision, but ultimately you may fuck over someone else. There is not really a good solution to this problem, and there may never be. Why should you care about it anyways? Maybe you only care because you fear going to hell. Maybe you don't care because you don't think hell exists. How do I determine what is the good choice? How do I choose the good that is good for all? We understand that you are human, and that you make mistakes. We understand that you'll fuck some people over it, because that's just life. But maybe you could lessen the severity of the fucking with a simple solution. And the solution is, paraphrasing author and philosopher A.C. Grayling, is to treat human beings with sympathy and generosity. Because being a human being is not easy. We are not here to prescribe to you how we believe you should conduct yourself in the world. Because who's to say we know any fucking thing? We just know that the old adage, treat others how you want to be treated, is a pretty simple solution. If you don't want to be stabbed, don't stab others. If you like having your personal belongings, don't steal the personal belongings of others. If you wouldn't want it done to you, then don't do it to someone else. Why should I care about others? We often long for some kind of utopia or heaven that we can witness or take part in. A world where we don't have to live in fear of others. A world decorated with beauty and absolutely free of suffering. Religious doctrines promise these possibilities in the afterlife. They treat human existence as some sort of challenge where you must live a life free of sin. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. Why not just do good for the fuck of it instead of out of fear of a higher power? What if we're already in heaven? What if we just have to put the finishing touches on it? Life on earth is imperfect. We're aware of that. Tragedies occur, sadness will ensue, but you can change the world. These problems don't have to exist. You can create heaven on earth. No matter how insignificant you may feel, you hold more power than you can ever imagine. You are capable of thinking for yourself and capable of making decisions. But the most important decision you will ever make is how you treat your fellow players in the game of life. Why play as opponents when we can play as a team? Together, we can do remarkable things. Human beings are the hominids that created the car, the airplane, the rocket ship. You are also the hominids that started wars, created atomic bombs, and now artificial intelligence. We hold the future in the palm of our hands, and quite honestly, we are letting it slip through our fingers. Nice place, bad setting isn't telling you how you should live. It's merely a suggestion, and a pretty fucking good one. We are here on Earth.